Hi folks, welcome back, and as always, thanks for joining. Today we're going to explore cold process porcelain. Now this video was inspired by a subscriber who watched me make sustainable clay last week, and he posed the question to me about the problem with cold process porcelain, and specifically the considerable shrinkage. Uh, it's been reported can, widespread that it uh, it shrinks up to 15 percent. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to address a problem that you folks are having. And I looked and there are dozens of videos with hundreds of thousands of views by YouTube creators that have millions of subscribers and they all display the same thing. They go over and over again the same thing and then they simply report at the end well it's going to shrink 15 percent. Well, we're going to address that. Now last week, and here it is right here, this is the stuff that we made last week and it's been in the refrigerator all week and still just fine. The little doodads that I made last week are still right here and I don't see any shrinkage. The problem with uh, the, this is that it dries hard. So uh, for some artists that's not a, uh, a medium that they want to work with. They want something that remains flexible, which is why they use cold processed porcelain. It remains flexible. So I started looking and what I found was they all do the same thing. They all use PVA. Now PVA is the culprit for the shrinkage. It's what also gives it its flexibility. Now almost without exception everyone uses the same two ingredients. They use cornstarch and they use PVA. Well in chemistry both of these are binders. However, you're not taking advantage of the binding properties of cornstarch by not uh, catalyzing it with an alkaline. What you're doing is you're using the PVA as the binder and negating this. So I'm thrilled to be presented with the opportunity to reformulate cold process porcelain. All right, so let's get started. Oh, and uh, let me add this before we get started, okay? I've laid out the table uh, to let you see exactly uh, where we're going with this and the materials that we're going to be using to reformulate this uh, this clay, this porcelain. Um, now, uh, the catalyst that we're going to use to activate the cornstarch is baking soda. Baking soda is a weak alkali. Now, the PVA, well, we're going to work with that just a little bit. I'm going to see if I can add this in a small amount to my existing clay to give it some flexibility because we already know that shrinkage is not a problem with that. So, however, my favorite elastomer is a humectant called glycerin. Very inexpensive stuff. Uh, in terms of cost and these quantities about the same price. However, I will always choose a, a sustainable alternative over something that is not sustainable. So we're going to look at that as well. Now in the videos folks will use vinegar and on the surface okay it's sustainable. However, it's slightly acid and it will neutralize the actions of the baking soda somewhat. So we can easily omit that and use something that I regularly use as a critter deterrent and that is thymol. Now thymol is one of the active ingredients in Listerine. Now I put here the purple. Uh, it's more recognizable than the gold I think. So this is what we're going to use to replace vinegar. Okay, now let's get going. First, let's start off to see where we're at with the uh, clay that I made last week. Now, we know that this will dry hard, but it does not shrink. 
So for the goal of a cold process porcelain, you want the flexibility. So I've uh, peeled off three little lumps and put them in these bowls. And I'm going to uh, use this sort of as the control. I'm going to need this a bit. It still seems a bit cold, but I think that uh, at this temperature, we should manage to get the results we're looking for once we find the solution. Now, one of the attributes of cold porcelain is when you pull the two pieces apart, they come to very fine points. And this, of course, does not. And it will also dry hard. Another attribute of the cold porcelain is that you can pull it and get very fine details. And although this does show some detail, uh, I don't think it is really what you folks are looking for. So there's that. Let's just pick one of these. And to start with, we're going to uh, go with what we know. And that is we're going to include the Elmer's PVA. And I'm guessing at the quantities. But we should see. This may be a bit tricky here. Let's see if I can pull some up in a pipette. And I'm going to measure out a quarter teaspoon. Thereabouts. I'm about to make a mess, but let's see. Let's see what that little bit does. And just like the videos I've watched, quite sticky. I do have the hand lotion standing by, but let's see if uh, I can avoid the use of that by wearing the gloves. And we are still uh, lumping. It's not a clean point. Let's add a little bit more. And let's continue to add this until we see what you folks are looking for. I have to speed this thing up along a bit. Let's just pour out a larger amount. We're just going to dollop it in there. Uh, my uh, focus here is to um, add enough of the PVA in volume to the size of what I have in the ball that I initially pulled out. So.
and still nothing. So. We might as well take it to the point of the ridiculous. And see if we can achieve any result at all. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Let's move on. All right, so we're going to move on here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to get a, uh, a formula to work that uh, is a, provides a medium that uh, does not uh, fill your needs as an artist and that it is it makes a flexible clay however the shrinkage so we're going to move on and I suspect that one of the things that is used in the making of the cold porcelain you folks you slather up with hand lotion well the number two ingredient in hand lotion is glycerin and I suspect that is just as much of the formula and why it works to keep it flexible as anything else so we are going to start adding glycerin to the clay that I made last week. And let's see. I don't want to go crazy, but I do want to use a uh, a generous amount, and I'm going to add. That was probably two already. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, say fifteen drops. Let's knead this in and see if it is the glycerin.
I think we're getting very close here. There we go. I'm pretty sure that's what you guys are looking for. I'm pulling it apart and it's coming to sharp peaks. Much more effective than the uh, PVA. I'm going to need this a bit more. Try to ball it up again and then I'm going to stamp this out into a mold and we're going to dry this and see if we get uh, any shrinkage. I would wager that this will also be flexible uh, due to the addition of the glycerin. All right. Alright, so now I'm going to roll these two out. Now this is the uh, clay that we made last week, right here. And this is the clay that we've modified with glycerin. I'm going to roll it out here onto this uh, silicone cooling mat that I made for the boss, who also let me buy her a house. And I'm going to let them air dry. Now, tomorrow when I come back, if they're not dried, I am going to pop these into the oven, which is why this mat is the size that it is because it will also fit into my uh, oven here in the lab. Shh. Don't tell her. Okay. I think for the top I'm going to use the uh, Teflon because she was always getting annoyed with me using her rolling pin. I bought one and I rather like it because it is uh, silicone. She hasn't spotted it yet so I'm safe. I'll be able to continue to use it in the lab.
This could probably use a little dusting of something. And when this dries, we're going to come back and we're going to measure shrinkage, if any. Well, I seem to have done it again, where I say that I'm going to let this dry overnight. But out of curiosity, what I did was I popped these into the oven to uh, see where we're at with this. And I, uh, I said for 15 minutes at 200. Now that's 15 minutes heat up and cool down cycle and they're dry and I have some results to show you first off uh, this is the reformulated it has glycerin there is some discoloration on the outside this of course is firm uh, hold this up and you can see zero shrinkage and uh, this is not flexible this is hard Now this is what uh, we're interested in here. This is not what we're looking for so much, but it gave results that I thought it would be valuable to you to show where we're at here. There is virtually no shrinkage. I would give it uh, a 1% shrinkage. Okay. And... Uh, it is not flexible like cold porcelain that you would want, but it is semi-flexible. So I thought I should show this to you. So um, artists, you have a, uh, a medium here that you can work with a little bit if you need something that's semi-flexible. We have this. I see a little bit of a crack right there, but we're going to uh, we're going to discuss this. All right, so we've reached the point now where we can uh, uh, examine some results here. Uh, Semi-flexible. Now this is not exactly cold processed porcelain, and I'm going to continue. I, uh, I'm inspired enough to uh, continue on and perhaps make another video, perhaps two, in a series of steps to reformulate uh, cold processed porcelain. Uh, but we know now that we can eliminate the PBA. Now, the culprit in the PBA is the water. There's a lot of water in this, and that is what's giving us the shrinkage. So we can eliminate that, and we can use glycerin as the plasticizer. So in the next video, what I plan on doing is reducing the amount of water that I put into this base formula here, and we're going to continue to reduce the water until we have the absolute minimum required. We're going to make it more flexible by adding more glycerin and I think perhaps we'll have something by then. And, uh, I get a lot of questions uh, about uh, am I on Twitter or Instagram. Well, I'm not a politician so Twitter has no value for me, but uh, Instagram, well, I did put my grandma on speed dial so, hi Graham, yes I'm eating, yes I'm washing behind my ears, I just wanted to say hi, yes, I have Instagram. Thanks so much for watching, stay tuned, and if you like, uh, please subscribe. Bye bye now.